here's here's an interesting thing that I want to cover. The HBCU presidents who showed up to the White House on yesterday uh, in order to discuss the issues that were important to the HBCU presidents uh, and to HBCUs. H, for those of you who don't know, HBCU stands for Historically Black College and University. And um, so yesterday you had... I don't know exactly how many uh, presidents showed up, but you had dozens of presidents show up um, to speak with Donald Trump about their issues. And one of the first things that came out was the fact that hardly none of them who went to speak with the president actually got a chance to say what they went to say. But all of them got an opportunity to take a photo with Donald Trump. I don't think that should be surprising to anyone, uh, except for the people who seem to have thought that this was going to be a great opportunity for the HBCUs to be heard like they have never been heard before. Sorry for the radio audience. I did the quote unquote, never been heard before. Right. But what ultimately ended up happening in this exchange was really just a photo op for Donald Trump. And and everyone is saying that, oh, Donald Trump is getting ready to do so, so much for for HBCUs. I'm waiting to see this executive order. I'm waiting to see the executive order because the only thing that Donald Trump has actually promised was to bring the office of the HBCU into the White House. That's the only thing that he actually promised. He hasn't promised any funds. He hasn't promised, you know, he hasn't put it in writing that he's going to fund them in any higher or any more significant fashion. He very well might do that. But as of right now, the only thing he's promised is that he's going to bring that office into the White House as though that is something for, you know, everyone to, you know, wait with bated breath that the most important thing that could happen would be for Donald Trump to bring the uh, historically black colleges and universities office into the White House. Now, I'm not going to double down. I'm not going to I'm not going to say what Donald Trump isn't going to do because I have no idea what he's going to do. The question is, is what Donald Trump going to give HBCUs going to offset all of the cuts that he's looking to make in the Department of Education around the Pell Grant and around all the other types of funding that the financial aid that these HBCUs actually use also. So if he's going to do, let's say he does, let's say he increases funding. Let's say he does something brilliant for the HBCUs. Great. Is it going to offset all of the other draconian cuts that Donald Trump is looking to institute? I'm not sure that it does. I, I, I mean, and, and again, I'll pause. I'm going to pause and take a moment and take a step back and say, we'll have to see. We'll have to see because there's, you know, there's one thing to make these promises. It's another thing to actually make a promise that actually carries some significant weight to it or make a promise to that that benefits a person above and beyond what you're doing behind their back. What you're, you're, he's getting ready to gut so many programs that are important to the HBCUs, to every university, and yet everyone is, is falling heads over heel in love with him because he's, he met with HBCU presidents. <sighs> I, I don't know. To me, to me, it would make sense. One, not not only not only is it a matter of whether or not Donald Trump is going to give them enough to offset, which it, it just doesn't make sense that it could. Right. So if he increases the funding there, how much do they depend on Pell Grants? How much do they p depend on financial aid? If, if he increases, if he gives them a, a, a higher endowment or whatever percentage that he's going to give them, it just doesn't seem as though it could cover the cuts that he's getting ready to institute. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and I will wait to see. <laughs> I mean, because that's all we could do at this point. Let's wait and see if Donald Trump actually does something for black colleges and universities above and beyond simply bringing that office into the White House. Because these presidents are catching hell left and right uh, for this photo op. Because the last thing that you want to do is to be to to be used as a prop to say, hey, Donald Trump isn't racist. Donald Trump is a racist. Look at all these black people surrounding him. Meanwhile, he's not only not helping your school, he's undermining your school. 
not to mention Bessie DeVos, who I shouldn't even mention because of how ridiculous she is. She's used this as an opportunity to peddle school vouchers. Which doesn't make sense because black colleges and universities are not a part of the voucher system. But instead, she wanted to use this as an opportunity to say that this is this is this is a an example of of historically how people had to have school choice. Betsy DeVos redefined the purpose for which HBCUs were created to be about school choice. Never mind, <laughs> never mind the historical reality that black students could not go to white colleges. And so it wasn't a choice. You don't have a choice when you're, re you're restricted from going somewhere. But again, should anyone be surprised that, uh, anyway, you know Betsy DeVos, you know the state of the Department of Education. The only question is, will Donald Trump give these colleges and universities anything significant such that it covers what he's getting ready to cut in the, the Department of Education and the Pell Grants and student funding, student loans?